Hey everyone, so today is just gonna be a good old-fashioned beer in a chat. No crafts, no fancy editing, just me, a brew, and some pretty big life changes. I don't know what I'm gonna title this yet, but none of this video is clickbait. You get to know my secret five-year day job. There's a tale about how it was leaked. And then in part two, I'll talk about how I walked away from that career, which had healthcare and a 401k, to follow my dream. And we'll close things out with how I will likely quit YouTube one day. And that's okay. It's not a sad thing. It's actually a really happy thing. So let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Earlier this year, I said goodbye to a full-time adult gig. Would you like to know what I did since 2014? Drum roll. I was a flight attendant. Can you believe it? Weird, right? <laughs> I have some stories. One time I dove and saved a toddler who was standing in the aisle during landing, and once I was spit on. But I'll save those fun anecdotes for another time. A lot of you didn't know about my stewardess status. Surprise! But still, many of you did, because unfortunately, long before I started contemplating quitting, my job was non-consensually leaked on the internet. And today, I want to talk about that. Although this happened almost 10 months ago, I never addressed the event, because while it was going on, I was terrified. We'll get to why soon. But now I'm finally feeling brave enough to discuss my experience, and I think there are a lot of creators, consumers, and all kinds of internet folks who can learn quite a bit from analyzing what happened to me. Also, since I'm not with that employer anymore, I'm no longer worried about drawing attention to the debacle. I don't want this to be a tea-spilling or shady kind of post. I personally have no desire to focus on the person who did it. I'm not here to speculate on their motives, and I'd appreciate it if you join me in simply examining the action. Why? Otherwise, I'm worried we'll get off track. This will become beef rather than a meaningful conversation about why this sort of leaking, doxing, and exposing is not okay. Because frankly, it's absolutely unacceptable. Disclosing private information non-consensually about another person to a large audience is negligent, irresponsible, dangerous, and abuse of a platform, often illegal. And even if it seems like NBD in the moment, it can have irreversible consequences for the person whose info is being spread. Also, the web has made this issue so messy and complex, hence the digital essay. Before I get into that, though, I'll share my story. My job leak happened when another YouTuber shared what my career was in a video on their channel that amassed nearly 500,000 views. That's a lot. And this occurred even though I had made it clear on my socials numerous times that my job title was something that I wanted to keep private. Both of us have decided that it is in our best interest to not disclose what company we work for or what our specific position is. Honestly, I keep my job secret because I just really want some things to be private and separate from YouTube. This balance and sense of normalcy is important to me, and I hope you can respect that. So when that request was violated, I was hurt and panicked. My probably naive trust in the internet was shook. For years I discussed navigating a corporate environment while being queer and trans because I thought those experiences could be valuable for others in similar situations to hear. And I had expressed a boundary that most folks, most folks I was aware of anyway, respected. No one guessed or even really asked about the specifics of my job. Until one day, in an instant, that privacy was shattered and I felt helpless. So why didn't I want people to know I was a flight attendant? There were many reasons. I'll start with some of the more negligible ones and then build to the scarier motivators. One, I didn't want folks to know what I did because I didn't want to be a distraction at work. People recognized me on the plane now and then and that could be fun, but I would always have to keep our chatting to a minimum because I was there to work. I had a lot of responsibility regarding safety, on-time departure, accommodating special needs, pretzel distribution, very important. I didn't want people to look for me in airports or on planes or tweet my airline asking when I worked. I wanted to show up, assist customers, support my coworkers, and help travelers get from point A to point B safely. That's what I was there to do, after all. And that might seem not that important, but at the end of the day, the internet is not entitled to know everything about me. I'm allowed to try and have private parts of my life, and purposefully sabotaging that is not a cool thing to do. Reason two, in a land of strong, queer, trans and political opinions, I felt vulnerable about people knowing who my employer was. In a world where there are smartphone cameras in every pocket, I felt like a target in my uniform. There are folks out there who really don't like trans people. I'm trans if you're new. There are people who really don't like non-binary individuals. And there are folks who really don't like me, specifically, in a very invested way. Content warning, I'm about to show probably some of the more tame, transphobic, body shamey, bizarre hate content that I get. And I need a drink before I do it. 
There are countless scary photoshopped pictures, unflattering meme images, and accounts created solely for the purpose of parroting me in a cruel way and or harassing me until I block them. It's like a game for some people, I guess. What a weird game! <laughs> Folks have even superimposed bras and boobs back on my body after I got top surgery. Good ol' ha! I gave you your dysphoria back humor. Classic. People have put together strange, scripted, simulated videos making fun of my wife. Someone disliked me so much once that they commissioned, I think, I think they commissioned it, an artist to draw cartoon hate art of me for their YouTube banner. That's right, a mean-spirited caricature of me was someone's channel art for a while. You haven't made it until a person and has paid for some hate art of you. Just saying. And that's not even counting the unkind comments and videos I get on the regs. Ooh, I have one more story. One human made almost 50 accounts in a week just to bother me because I kept blocking them. Unfortunately, I eventually discovered the mute button and our dance came to an end. Do you want to be in the video? Just come here. Hi, you fluffy baby. So where is all this going? When I think about all the anti-queer, anti-trans, anti-ash accounts out there, the gravitas of the situation hits me. I realize anyone can call my company and try to get me fired. And there are a lot of potentially interested anyones. Based on past hate I've received, I wouldn't be shocked if somebody photoshopped something horribly offensive in a picture of me wearing my uniform, or fabricated a story about how I threw coffee in their face and swore at them on a flight. And then I wouldn't be surprised if they made a hundred accounts in an attempt to make the whole thing go viral. People make up false narratives about me all the time. In the video that leaked my job, for instance, there was a story shared about how I flew to another country to attend a YouTube event that summer. Not only did I not go to that country at all that summer, but I've never even been to that YouTube event. Like, ever. Misinformation is rampant online, and I was not interested in having to defend myself to my employer because somebody contacted them with a false claim. Also, what made leaking my job in that particular video especially scary was because of the nature of the video. It exposed my job to tons of people who likely weren't the biggest fans of me. It wasn't the same as someone who follows me and probably wants good things for me randomly guessing on Twitter, which again, never even really happened. When it came down to it, unlike my shaky, frequently demonetized YouTube revenue, my day job was was my stable income. It was what provided Grayson and I access to healthcare, and we counted on that money to pay for our mortgage, utilities, pet care, food, etc. When my info was put out there for everyone, my job security, my livelihood, felt threatened. And finally, what made my job leak super frightening was that there didn't feel like there was anything I could do about it. This actually ends up being how a lot of creators feel, when they are doxxed and or personal or misinformation is spread about them. The video that leaked my job was public for many months, the remainder of my employment at my company. And like I mentioned earlier, it amassed almost half a million views. I did recently notice it's been taken down. I am not sure why, but it is something I definitely appreciate. When it was initially posted, out of curiosity, I contacted a friend who's an entertainment lawyer and does a bulk of their work in the YouTube sphere. I asked him what route a creator can take when someone spreads unwanted or private info about them, and he essentially told me that most folks end up doing nothing. This is because the laws surrounding doxing can be fairly murky, and pursuing legal action is often painfully lengthy and expensive. But mostly, and this is what's wild, attempts to contact the doxer, get a video taken down, or even respond publicly, almost always results in more controversy and traffic to the original post or issue. It gives the original post a huge uptick or boost in YouTube's algorithm, and that video will start showing up in the recommended section of your videos. So basically, the more you try to address or handle a problem, the harder it becomes to escape it. What a broken system! In that moment, I can't describe how intimidated I was. The person who shared my day job had a large following, had pals who had large followings, and if they were already willing to make a video exposing personal info about me, I wasn't sure what else they might do if I made a reply on YouTube that potentially antagonized them or their audience. I felt paralyzed, and I found myself in some pretty victim blamey headspaces. I thought, I probably deserve this. I did choose to mention I have a job, after all. That was my choice. Isn't that kind of asking for it? You know, maybe I did this to myself. No. Hindsight Ash is gonna shut that down real quick. That is silly. Sharing my personal info was not something that person had permission to do. I never implied that would be okay, I am entitled to privacy, and ultimately it was not acceptable. End of story. The problem is spilling tea, sharing secrets, and exposing people is behavior that has become woven into our societal fabric, especially online. We see it constantly in drama, story time, and clickbait, hot take, gossip videos that saturate the platform. It has become absolutely normal. Normalized. But just because something is normalized does not mean it's okay. And what's worse is, like we briefly touched on earlier, the YouTube algorithm rewards this. Secrets and inside scoops make videos exciting. They instantly give a creator an 
easy clickable title, and if they hold out to reveal the golden nugget until the end, some stellar watch time. This is why it's tempting to spill if you know something saucy. And once a creator reaps the rewards of doing so through subscribers or virality, it can become addicting. It's a vicious cycle and the machine is primed to encourage breaches in privacy. What's more, sentiments we are frequently bombarded with on YouTube are be authentic, be genuine, be vulnerable. Sometimes I feel this is misinterpreted as throw boundaries out the window and overshare until you are emotionally exhausted. Literally give your soul to your audience, become enmeshed with them. Where's the line where you stop and your viewers start? Who knows? Who cares? Gotta keep it hundred, right? Boundaries can get so blurred at times that audiences may feel that they are entitled to know everything about their favorite influencer. Gross. I hate the word influencer. This is why it might not even seem so wrong when one creator shares a private thing about another creator. Aren't we supposed to be transparent after all? Isn't a person sharing their whole intimate unfiltered self what makes YouTube so special? So raw and refreshing? It's easy to rationalize why leaking personal info isn't so bad. They chose the public life. They shouldn't be on YouTube if they don't want people to be curious. Hey, they left the breadcrumbs. Obviously folks are gonna guess. That's what the internet does. What are you hiding? I don't get why this would even be a big deal to share. Assumptions like this are dangerous though, because like many assumptions, they're often inaccurate. You don't know what a person has going on in their life or why they might want to keep something to themselves. Boundaries are healthy. Privacy and filters are not fake. And you are not obligated to disclose personal life details simply because you have an audience. So you've heard my story and you've heard me rant about the interwebs. What are the takeaways of this video? Well, hopefully now you have some empathy for how scary it can be for private info to be non-consensually shared. Hopefully you understand that leaks like this are not just inconvenient and uncomfortable, but they can have serious life-altering consequences. If you're a creator, hopefully you have a newfound respect for the information you share about others. You have a lot of power, and with that comes some serious responsibility. Spider-Man, don't abuse that. Be mindful that your videos have real life effects on other living, breathing human beings. And understand that you're allowed to have privacy, no matter how much the internet tells you you're not. With the way YouTube is built, it can be easy to forget this. We are often rewarded for oversharing. So giving ourselves permission to keep things to ourselves can feel strange. You do not owe anybody anything that you do not want to share, however. Also, as my good pal Jackson Bird put in a talk recently, remember that as much as you may love and trust your core audience, anything you put out there online can be seen by anyone, and is basically permanent and searchable forever through archives. So really ask yourself why you feel the need to share personal things. What objective are they serving? Can you generalize something, speak about it hypothetically, and still get the same effect? If you're feeling uncomfortable about sharing something, maybe take that gut feeling as a sign. Basically, be cautious. I did generalize and still my privacy was breached. This whole experience made Grayson and I officially commit to the decision to not put our future children online. Setting up safeguards is an important part of existing on the web, because even though it's not acceptable for people to invade others' privacy, the reality is there are folks online who are okay with doing not acceptable things. If you're a viewer, consider not consuming content that feeds into toxic exposure culture. Content like this is dehumanizing to the person it's about, and the more you watch, the more YouTube learns to push that kind of content to the top. We we can all play a part in breaking the cycle that disrespects and tears other people down. And we can work to create something that instead treats folks with dignity and builds them up. Wow, this got heavy! Well, part two is going to be 300% lighter. I don't know when I'm gonna post it because I'm busy living life. But when I do, you'll learn how I made the decision to quit my job, follow my dream, and what is next for me. Yay! Okay, bye. <laughs> is this thing on? There we go. Hello everyone! You made it to the end of the video! Just in time for a sponsorship! Lucky you! I'm frankly gay, chiming in to tell you about Audible. Because I no longer have a job and have to feed my cats! <coughs> Did you know Amazon Prime members can get Audible? For $4.95 a month for the first three months! That's like getting three months for the price of one! Oh my! And after that it's only $14.95 a month! I spend more than that on Elliot's sweater collection. Go to audible.com slash ashardell or text ashardell to 500-500 to get started. Offer ends July 31st, 2019. I love Audible because they have an unmatched selection of books to choose from. They also have some original content that's the cat's meow. They are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers. There's content covering theater, journalism, psychology, literature, history, and more. You can just learn so much. Become so clever. I like to listen to Audible when petting my cats, hugging my cats, or building ornate shrines for my cats. 
Also, it helps me relax before bedtime. One of the last great titles I listened to was The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk, MD. Also, Delivered from Distraction, which is about ADHD, Running on Empty, which is about coping with emotional childhood neglect, and The Highly Sensitive Person. These are all Easter eggs for what my next career will be. So again, if this sounds like your jam and you're a Prime member, go to audible.com slash ashhardell or text ashhardell to 500-500 to get Audible for $4.95 a month for your first three months. And after that, it's only $14.95 a month. That's less than Arthur's designer mouse toys. But hurry, cause this offer ends July 31st, 2019! That's soon! Thanks for helping me spoil my floofers! Bye now!